Hey guys, Derekster here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make a combination lock. And if you're looking at it, you've probably seen much, much, much simpler versions of it, but this one is kind of special because of what it can do compared to the others. So just as an example, I have behind me here the very, very simple and tried and true lever one. The two faults to the lever combination lock that I know of are one, levers are ugly and just stick off the wall and like I said ugly. The other one is it doesn't matter what order you pull the levers in. Like the correct combination here is those two down and those two up. Now I can reach that combination in any way I want to. It doesn't matter how, as long as I get to this one we're good. Which isn't inherently bad, you can just spam stuff, but then again with any other version you can just spam things and it might eventually work anyway. So it really comes down to the levers being ugly, I guess. The order is important too, but I don't know, spamming will get you results if you have enough time either way. So this thing, just to show it real quick, the reason why I decided to make this was, again, to solve the problem of the order of what, the order of which you do things, that's what I'm trying to say, that's what I'm trying to say, actually matters. So, and on top of that, I have found another one, another version of a combination lock probably about a year and a half ago now that did that, but it required you to wait half a second to a second between each button press, and I didn't really like that either. It felt bad, clunky, and annoying, because if you wanted to be fast or something, you're getting chased to your base by a creeper, you can't just sit there and press a button and wait. Press a button and wait. You know what I mean. So... This is what I came up with. I've been using it for a long time and I've been fiddling with the design here and there. And I finally decided to put out an actual, uh, what's the word? It's late, give me a break. Tutorial. <laughs> that shouldn't be a hard word. Tutorial on how to make it. But uh, just to demonstrate it real quick here. If I press these two buttons, those blocks go up. If I press the wrong one, all of it resets. If I press all of them in the right order, you get your output. So to build it, I'm going to try to go over each section and what it does and why it's there. And we'll see how this works out. So the very first part is buttons, and I like them too high just so you can see them. And it also, as you can see, makes them have to dig into the ground over there in just a minute. So this next part is, you could go straight into the uh, pulse limiters that I've got right there but then you end up with a couple of problems about how uh, timing wise with the repeaters and I'm a bit of an OCD freak and it really helps to everything exactly even when you're doing this so this part is just to keep all of it even because uh, as an example if you were to go straight into the pulse limiters it'd be like this and then you've got extra tick an extra tick, sorry, on each one of those. So we do this, and then down here, you put a repeater at three ticks in front of each one that has redstone dust on it, and each one that has a repeater, you put redstone dust in front of. You cover all of those with blocks, and then the same thing goes down here in front of the dust. You put repeaters at three ticks each, and more dust, and blocks in front of those and then torches on the front of all eight of those blocks you put down, and then dust on top of each one that has a repeater pointing into it. So what you just did here is you've created a pulse limiter. And what I wanted to do, press the button, and that way you get a short pulse every time you press the button, I think. That should work, yeah, okay, it's working. So the next thing we need to do is you need a line of blocks like this for every button press you want. Now a limitation to note with this version of the combination lock is each button can only be used one time. I've tried to make it so you can do it more than once on each button and I think it's doable but the amount of redstone you need in the build about triples and it gets really annoying. So for something kind of simple this is what we're gonna go with. So one line, two line, that's three and here is four. That'll be each button once and then we fill in all of the gaps 
with repeaters. And what this does is every time you press one of these buttons, like that, it goes down this line and only this line, which we can then decode, for lack of a better word, later. So I'm going to do the same combination we had before, which is just left to right. So you go to the very back, and you put the, uh, well, sorry, let me start over. <laughs> this button makes the signal good on this line, and because I want that button to be first, you go to the very f back one and put a dust right here so that this repeater powers this dust, and then blocks that way, and more dust. So that way when you press the other buttons, it doesn't power this line. Only that one button will power this line. For this one, next one back, we want it to be that button, so the dust goes there. Same here, this one there, and this one there. And then you put blocks again. Oh, I just made something longer. Did I? No? Okay. I thought I accidentally clicked one of the repeaters there. Sorry. And that goes like that. Alright, so what this does, just to reiterate one more time in case anyone got lost, is if you watch, actually you know what, an easier way to demonstrate this is once I get this next part done. So dust goes onto these and then dust down to here, and then you actually put your sticky pistons right here facing up. Because that will power the pistons and it'll also power the redstone under it, which is convenient. So when you press that one, the back line fires, this one, next line fires, and so on and so forth. So now that we're at this point, you put sand or any other gravity block on top of your sticky pistons. And the reasoning for this is because if you get just the perfect amount of time within the tick of redstone of each other, sometimes these become uh, one tick pulse pistons and it'll leave its block up here when it's not supposed to. And putting the gravity block on top of it when, when that happens makes it so that the sand just falls back down. Uh, I think I might be talking a bit fast, so I will attempt to slow down for you guys. Okay. So what I just did there is by powering this repeater right here, when this sand block gets pushed up, when this is powered, it'll hold the piston up with the sand block on top of it. And to show you, push the button, and it powers it, stays up, and it'll power the next one in line which will then allow me to press the next one and let it stay up. Pressing the one in the wrong order will not do anything because there's not any power there to hold it. And another thing also to note with the limitation for this is if you press the same button that's already been pressed that was pressed correctly before, nothing happens. It won't do anything. So pressing the same button twice will not reset it. Which is a little unfortunate, but again, trying to make it so that two button presses one in a, in a row are detected is a lot of extra redstone from what I've been able to find. So at this point, you put, oop, not there, one more line of redstone dust out, and this goes into vertical RS nor latches, which I will build real quick here. Four of them. And the reason we do the vertical one is so that we can keep all of the redstone compact here. Torch there, torch there. Same with all of these. Nope. Right there. And then we want dust on the top. And two dust there. So those are RS nor latches, and just to show you in case you are not sure, you power the bottom one, it stays on. You power the top one, it stays on. Uh, I want a button right here for now so that I can reset this. Because when this torch turns off, all this turns off, and the pistons are then allowed to retract, which is something we will need later on here in a little bit. And then at this point, we put repeaters right here, followed by, actually I don't quite remember. This is the new part that I just designed, so uh, right. So we build other things that look very, very, very similar to the RS nor latches right behind them, but they are not, because of a few minor differences. Let me get these built real quick, like, no, that goes there. A torch and a torch. And these torches this time are meant to send the signal upward instead of flipping the signal back and forth. Oh, hit the block. So these go right there and power into, well, more sticky pistons with sand on top. And there is a gravity block on top of these gravel, sand, red sand, any of those. 
on top of these pistons for the exact same reason as those pistons, whereas if the timing ended up just right, you could end up leaving your block up above, and you don't really want that to happen because it breaks the whole thing. So from here, we have to put repeaters out one more time. Uh, the reason that these repeaters, or the redstone on this block and this block are not dust, is because that will create a bud switch for all of these. And you, you really don't want that, because that gets really ugly. And these are all on three ticks, because if they're not, the length of the signal going through from this to this sand block to this repeater ends up not being long enough to actually do anything for you. You'll see the redstone line that's right out here on these blocks light up, but it won't change any states of anything. It won't switch a torch to, from off to on. Uh, it won't even, it's not long enough to make this or RS nor latch switch back to where you want it, which is what we're going to do right now. So the redstone line goes right here, and then we need a reset line, which is what we're doing from uh, this point this way. All of that is just to reset it if you press the wrong button. So to do that, we need a way to reset these RS nor latches back to this state right here. And we also need it that when that happens to reset this bad boy right here, this torch, so he turns off. So that way, when it gets, what's the word, triggered, having problems with words. I actually do that a lot. But anyway, when this gets triggered and this gets triggered, these torches, well, these ones will turn on because I'm going to invert the signal. But this one will turn off, these will turn on. That'll reset all of these this way, and it will turn this torch off so all of these goes back down resetting all of it. Now what we need to do is... Oh, you know what? I didn't need this line. Whoops! Go away. Thank you. Is to finish the reset line here. <laughs> My apologies. Uh, let's see here. This one goes there. You go right there. Whoa, nope, that's wrong. How do I do this? This way. This way. This way, and what did I do? I'm having a hard time remembering how I did this. Oh, you know what? I know what it is. Right, that went there, and then this went there, followed by that. Okay, my bad. Back this way again, and this will leave it all off. Just like that. So I haven't really explained the reset mechanism here, how this triggers all of this when it's supposed to, but I will get to that in just a second. All I need to do is make this line come over to here, and this isn't quite as pretty as my other one. What did I... I just kind of want to see what I did over here to make this one look a little bit different. Oh. Wait. Oh, yeah, okay. It's close. I have this backwards instead of a block here. You need a torch there so that this one is on because it's got inverted one time, so I have to invert it back to get it back to where it was, so it's opposite of that one. So the reset line is now done. There's just a couple more pieces of dust that need to be added, and that's here, here, and in these three gaps right here. So now the way all of this works is I will go over here and press the correct button first, just to show you all everything is lit up. That triggers this, it stays up, goes through here, triggers the RS nor latch, and also comes and turns this torch off. And when this torch gets turned off, this repeater gets turned off, so that when this gets powered and it goes through and powers this piston, when I power this line right here, it does not send a signal to the reset line. So I press the next button, which would be this one. We go back over here. Everything happened, just like the first one. RS Norlatch triggered. That get held that got held up. That get held up. Words are hard. And the same thing happens here. Powers that piston, doesn't uh, trigger the reset line. And then this dust turns this torch off, and that repeats down the line. And then when you get all the way through, which would be this one and then that one, your output becomes on, and you can make this whatever you want. I.e. open a door, or... I, I like using it for... Uh, Jeb doors is my favorite because I really, really like Jeb doors. 
so some other things you can do with this is one, if you wanted to go the other direction with this so your output's on this side, you can. You just have to flip these around. So this one will need to be there, that one there, so that your first button you want to press is on this line, second one this line, third that line. Your torch goes on this side, and everything gets mirrored over here as well. So if that sounds really complicated to you, then you don't really need to do it. I like this way better because that way your output's on the same side as your input and you can have whatever you want it to do right over here next to your buttons. Uh, the other things you can do is you can have more inputs than four. You just need to expand these out this way and you'll just, your reset redstone will get wider and this will get a little wider too. And you can set this up any way you want. So an example, over behind this wall over here, I actually have it set up how I generally do it, which is with a 3x3 three three button panel. And this does look quite a bit bigger, but there are nine inputs instead of four. I'm not going to be showing you how to do this here or that door there, because it's just a lot of extra that I'm not really showing you. I'm just showing that it's expandable and what all it can do. So for here, the combination that I made is this one. Did I do that right? No, I put that in wrong. I missed a button. So we'll try that one more time. This is my combination. Much better. That opens up the Jeb door. From inside the Jeb door, I can then press a one button and close it. Another button. And reopen it. A little bit of a delay because of repeaters. And I can also close it with one button from outside. So just to prove that it is not some kind of hoax with this big one or something, I will press my first, oh, let me use that one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five sand blocks up, and then we'll press one of the wrong ones. Should be that one. And then all of it resets. So yeah, I hope that I explained how to do all of this fairly well. Uh, just to reiterate on this output, like I said, you can connect it to anything. Whatever you want that requires a redstone signal, you can make it attached to this. You can also put in as many inputs as you would like. Uh, your reset, this reset line, when you get more and more of them, can get kind of ugly. Because redstone does have the limit of only 15 blocks, as most of you probably know. And at that point, you have to start putting in repeaters. And it, it'll still work just fine if you throw in a repeater, like right here. But then the timing between this reset and this reset are a little bit off. And while that shouldn't affect anything, it drives me personally crazy, so I try to avoid it. But it is still possible. So you can make it as big as you want. doesn't really matter. It's very easily expandable. The other problem you could run into is if you make this too long, past, I don't know, 13-ish, you have to start trying to fit repeaters in, in here as well. And that, I haven't tried that. That might not work as well. If one of you want to try it, try it and make a video response, and I'll, I'll like it and check it out. It'll be great. I kind of want to know, but I don't really want to do it myself at the moment. So anyway, like I said just a second ago, I hope this is helpful. Leave a like on it for me if you like this design or anything. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments. I'll be sure to get to them. Uh, I really do hope this made a lot of sense. So yeah. I don't know how to end this because it's not my normal LP and I can't say see you guys in the next episode because there's not really a next episode of building a combination lock. So yeah. I'll see you guys later.